Let's talk a little bit about coatings, medias, films, temperatures. As these prints run through the machines, we're going to have three different cool down rates with the thermal films. So what's cooling down is the coating that's on the, on the media itself that actually receives the inks or the toners. The other is the adhesive that's in the film, and then the last one itself is the film. So what'll happen is with those three different cool down rates, the grain in the paper is going to be affected by how this goes. So in this print, let's take a look at this one. This print was run with the grain that was actually in the direction of the web itself, which is can be a problem. And with the other image, I ran this so that the grain was perpendicular to the rollers. So if I flip this over, you look at this back side, and you see really, really nice flat finish. And that's because I ran this with the grain perpendicular to the rollers. With this print, I ran it, the grain was in the direction of the web. And the results were the coating, the adhesive, and the film, when they get hot, they expand. When they cool down, they contract. So if you look at this one, you can see the lines that are running in the same direction as the paper grain. So what happened there is the paper tried to cool down at a different rate with the adhesive and the coatings and the film. And as it expanded this way going through the machine, it cooled down coming back this way. So the media tried to cool down before the adhesive and the film because the adhesive and the film are thicker, so they carry the heat longer. And that's why you see these lines. Okay? Now, in most printers today, copy machines, they generally will run a long grain paper. And the reason they do that is because they corrugate it like this because that gives it strength and they can feed it through the, pay, through the uh, printers and the copy machines easier. Same thing is with the inkjet printers. That all comes off of a roll, so they run that with long grain because it gives it more strength. If they tried to run it through the printer short grain, then what would happen is it's more susceptible to tear as it's being pulled through the machine. So what'll, what we're worried about is the way we run that through the laminator. Again, if I run it long grain like this through the laminator, you're going to have this type of effect as it cools down at a different rate. When I run it through this way, I'm not stretching that paper. I'm running it through so that the grain plays the important part in that. Now, there are different ways to tell whether or not your paper is long grain or short grain. One of the easiest ways to tell is to take your sheet of paper and fold it. So I folded this paper against the grain, and you can see how badly this folded. I've got a lot of, lot of uh, uh, buckling in it, for lack of a better term. Now if I take this paper and I run it, or I fold it this way with the grain, you see I have a nice, clean fold. You don't see any of the cracking or anything like that in this paper, all right? Now, with today's papers, a lot of it is recycled. And with the recycled paper, it's a little bit harder to tell which way the grain is. So one sure way to tell is to take a piece of paper like this, and wet it. So I'm going to take a paper towel with water on it, 
and I'm going to get that paper nice and wet like this and then I'm going to put it down on the table and watch what happens. You can see now that this side is curling up. So what that means is it's going to curl with the grain. So the grain is running in this direction, which when I put that back on this sheet, that tells me that that grain is running this way. This is high gloss photo paper. This is the hardest stuff to try to thermally, thermally laminate. The reason why is because this coating on here is really susceptible to heat. And even though it looks dry and it can be sitting there for a couple weeks after it came out of the processor, this coating still carries a little bit of moisture. And that moisture, uh, once it gets into the heat, it will just start to bubble and cause little volcanic explosions underneath the film in the adhesive itself. I don't recommend laminating anything that's, that's photo paper. Uh, you, they, your, your customer, if they want you to do this, they're, they're taking a big risk trying to do that. PSA is probably the only thing that I would actually use if you have to put a film on it. Okay. Now, the other thing is, along with that, some of the ink jets and, and uh, um, other types of print finishes like latex ink and UV inks, they're the same thing. The manufacturers have a certain drying time that they want you to let that sit and dry so that it does not, uh, does not have an effect. And this is true with PSA films, which is pressure sensitive adhesive, as well as thermals. What happens is if these don't dry properly, you get what's called outgassing. So all those solvents and eco solvents that are in there that, that are used to carry that ink to the paper and, and, and make it receptive to the, to the paper, that stuff has to gas, it has to outgas. And if it doesn't, then it gets trapped underneath the film. What it'll do then is it's going to look good for a few days. It might look good for a week or so, but then you start seeing little bubbles appear inside that print. And that's because that solvent is now outgassing. It'll also depend on whether or not you have a coating on the backside, such as another film. The, if it doesn't, if it can't escape this way, it'll try to escape this way. But the paper itself, depending on how thick that is, that meet the media, will some of it will allow to, to outgas through the backside, some of it won't. And if it doesn't, then you're just going to get a ruined print. So make sure if your customers bring you um, prints that they've, they've been properly uh, stored, they have been properly dried, otherwise you can run the risk of having ruined prints. The other thing is just plain moisture in the air. You want to try to have your lamination done in a humidity and a climatically controlled area, generally around 50% or less is good. A lot of times, especially with offset prints, what happens is that stack of paper sits there and the outer edges start to dry and it's still holding, retaining moisture in the center. So you still have this part right here is still moist, even though this side will indicate that it's pretty dry. What you'll see is as it runs through the machine, let's say that this is our path through the machine. This will look good through here, but what happens is those rollers act like a squeegee and this moisture is being squeegeed through the paper. And then all of a sudden, you'll see a bubble here and a bubble there and a bubble there and a bubble here. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see a great big bubble here and then a couple little small ones like this. 
This is the moisture being squeegeed through the paper, coming down, coming down, hitting a saturation point and exploding. It turns into steam because of the temperatures of your film and your adhesive. It'll actually turn into steam and then expand out through the, through the print.